we're doing a little something different today. We're not going to be talking about fragrance in specific, but we're going to be talking about hardships of being a content creator. And the first one I want to talk about is being exposed to the public, i.e. the world. I feel naked out here, B. And yes, there are going to be some people out there who are going to say, well, you're not being exposed to the world. And I beg to differ. Because if you check your analytics, you don't have people just from the U.S. watching your videos. You may have a small following in the UK, Australia, all over the world. May not be significant, but they're there. So you are being exposed to the world as a content creator. Doesn't matter what lane you're in, what you're doing, what you're talking about, you're gonna be exposed to the public, i.e. the world, which my first bullet point is gonna be what you wear is gonna be criticized. Very trivial if you ask me a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about, but once you put yourself in front of a camera, you, you open yourself up to criticism. And what I wore was heavily criticized at one point in time. I used to wear tank top shirts and maybe sometimes they would be a little stretched out around the collar, maybe a little stretched out around the armpit area. Maybe it was a little loose because I'm not one of those guys who throw away shirts you know, if my shirts don't have holes in them and aren't super dingy, I'm not going to throw them away. I'm just going to use those shirts when I cut grass, when I go to work, things like that. So, you know, that I expose myself to that. How you look, personal appearance is another thing that people are going to criticize you on. Uh, I commented on a post about LeBron James and it was, you know, something old. Um, I think it was on a Instagram or somewhere. It was some kind of NBA history thing or whatever. It, it showed LeBron James was, you know, in a practice facility somewhere. I guess he was with the Heat or whoever, what, whatever team it was. But I know Dwayne Wade and a couple of other guys were in the gym and LeBron was just throwing himself alleys, lobs, you know, bouncing the ball off, dunking it. And I commented, in which everybody was commenting, but I commented and I said to the effect of not really impressive. I've seen dunks like this before in person, you know, when I was in high school, before LeBron James was even, you know, thought about. And whether or not I should have said something or not, that's irrelevant to me. But I was attacked heavily by that comment like all the focus went from that to just me voicing my personal opinion and somebody came in the comment section and said oh where well, you're you're bald and you're fat and they went to the extreme of going to my instagram channel and looking at a picture of my girlfriend and i in which both of us are a little on the heavier set side um but that's okay um, they came back and they said, oh, you're bald, you're fat, your girlfriend, such and such, and both of y'all need to go to the gym. And I'm like, dude, what does that have to do with my opinion on LeBron James? Like, I, like, you just stated a bunch of obvious stuff. And I can't be mad at you about, about stating the obvious, but, I mean, attacking me and my family for a comment about LeBron James, like this guy doesn't even know you exist. But yeah, um, how you look, your personal appearance is gonna be attacked. How you talk, how you pronounce or mispronounce words is another point. Fragrances have weird long names at times. A lot of the perfumers are, for the most part, foreign or, you know, not from the U.S. So they have pretty 
weird style names. And it's hard to pronounce a lot of these names. And when you mispronounce something, people are quick to point that out in your comment section. How you pronounce or mispronounce the name of a fragrance is pointed out in your comment section. People wanting us to also be perfect or be like or similar to other channels is another thing that's going to be talked about because not all of us reviewers are the same. We're not all in the same boat, so to say. Yes, we all talk about the same fragrance or we all talk about fragrances, but we don't talk about the same we don't, our style of reviewing, I should say, is not going to be the same. If that was the case, then it would be boring. You would only be able to choose one channel, and that would be it. There, would be, there wouldn't be a need for any other channels if all of us were the same. We all bring a certain style, a certain flavor, whether it's something bland, whether it's you know super exciting, whether it's middle of the road. We all do something different. Uh, I've been criticized for not holding up the bottle enough in a video. I've been criticized about, you know, if I do hold up the bottle and show you the name of the fragrance, then I'm criticized because they've seen on another channel that they put the name of the fragrance pops up on the screen. And if I don't do that, I get criticized for it. So now not only do you want me to hold up the bottle, but you also want me to put the name of the fragrance up on the screen also because you've seen somebody else do that. If you had never seen that before, you wouldn't even ask me to do that. And then I'm speaking the notes in the video. That's not good enough. You want somebody, you want us to put the name of the, of the, the notes on the screen. Not only that, it's also going to be in many people's description. So you're going to get the notes. So not only do you want to see the visual, now you also want to be able to read it also in the description. If we don't put links, if we don't put all this other stuff in the description, you get criticized for that. None of us are perfect, guys. So just be aware of that you're not even perfect even with you coming up with all these criticisms if you want it to be perfect get in front of a camera do it the way you want us to do it and show us how to do it don't talk about it be about it is what i always say also realize that there are levels to fragrance a lot of us don't want to be heavily into the niche lane because niche fragrances are expensive. And they are expensive for a reason. Whatever the reason may be, I'm not going to go into that because I don't understand fully how fragrance works as far as like being made, the ingredients, how much they cost. That's not something I'm interested in. I don't care. I just know that I'm not going to spend X amount of dollars on a fragrance when I can smell just as good buying something a little more affordable. Now, once you get to a level of, let's just say designer, and you're tired of the same old, same old, and you want to experience something different, yes, it's okay to get niche but i will say this you don't have to run out and buy niche a full bottle full presentation you can always subscribe to subscription websites like royalty sense Lux SB.
where they can supply all your fragrance needs. Get a nice 9 ml decant for about 15 or 20 bucks a month. One of those sites, I know you can at least get up to two fragrances a month. I do one a month, but it works. And I can experience those fragrances and not worry about spending two, three, four, five hundred dollars on a bottle. I can just wear that decant, and if I like it enough, then I'll make the decision to go ahead and buy it. But other than that, I'm not gonna run out and continuously buy a whole bunch of expensive fragrances. And yes, I've also been criticized because you know, buying a bunch of cheapies, people say, Oh, well, you shouldn't just buy a bunch of cheapies, you should just save that twenty dollars and put it together, save it, and, and buy what you really want. Yeah, you can do that also. But I was buying them because of my channel, and I needed content for my channel. I don't have people sending me free bottles of stuff like a lot of these other reviewers do. I don't have those kind of connects. I don't have contact con contacts like that. I have to work for what I want. A lot of people can sit back and just get companies to send them Rosia, Rosia fragrances and all these other things. I don't have it like that. So I had I have to go out and purchase things to bring you guys this content. But I'm at a point now where I'm just reviewing what I have and that's going to be it. I've sold off a lot of my collection, so that's just how it goes with me. I've hit a turning point in my fragrance journey. And I'm not willing to spend a whole ton of money anymore on buying a bunch of fragrances. I'm just going to bring you what I have and whatever decants I get in the mail, I'll bring those to you as I wear them. And you guys can choose whether you want to deal with them or not. I know I was a little long-winded winded <laughs> with the first points, but this one is going to be pretty short. And I only have one question when it comes to this specific one. Trolling slash trolls. My question is, what is the purpose? And I know trolling sometimes comes from people who don't know you. And those people don't know you because they haven't taken the time to get to know you. They just see your face and it automatically triggers them. And they say, oh, well, I don't like this person. I'm going to trigger them and try to trick them out of their position, get them mad, get under their skin. And it has worked in the past. When I first started reviewing, I had an altercation. I'm not going to go back into that because that was a long time ago. And water under the bridge on my end, what other people are doing or saying still on their channels, that's on them. They have some growing to do. But me personally, I'm over it. Um, I actually took down the videos that I did in response to being attacked by said people. Um, I have never jumped in front of the, this camera or any other camera and just blatantly attacked anybody. It was always because I was being attacked. But I have deleted those videos. That was something that I didn't want my channel to be about. And so I got rid of those things. And now I am straight shooter. I only talk about what I want to talk about. And that's pretty much it. Um, my love of fragrance far exceeds the negativity. Um, I enjoy being a part of this fragrance community a lot. Um, there are a lot of bad things that come with it, but if we choose to focus solely on that, then that's pretty much what you're going to get. But the purpose of trolling for me is nonsense. But there are people out there who say trolling can help. I don't see how, but it is what it is. So. Moving right along. Last but definitely not least, monetization. Monetization seems to be a big, 
big point for a lot of people. And when I first came into Fragcom, I knew absolutely nothing about being monetized until I was close to that thousand subscriber mark, which is one of the marks you have to hit to become monetized along with some other uh, things you have to do first. But hitting a thousand subscribers is one of the milestones that you have to hit to become to be on your way to be monetized. And for some people, monetization is a bad thing. And for me, I don't see how because number one, companies pay for advertising. And we, our channels are like advertisements for fragrance companies or whatever you choose to do whether it's uh, you're advertising for tools tents uh hunting equipment whatever the case may be that those videos are like advertisements so if you want to look at it that way then we're like advertisers getting paid to advertise which is a good thing for monetization people say well, when you're monetized, it sways your uh, opinion about the fragrance. It, in some cases, maybe it does. But I can assure you for somebody like me, that doesn't persuade me at all. Now, I'm not going to be one the one who sits here and says something is trash or something smells, you know, like toilet water or something. I'm not going to go to that extreme, but I will say that this fragrance maybe just doesn't work for me it isn't for me um something to that effect which for some people that's going to be sugar coating but you don't have to always go around insulting people because there are people out who out here who put in time money energy they sacrificed a lot of hours away from their families what have you to you know perfect their craft or to put out product to make a living so monetization to me isn't a bad thing it really isn't it's just how certain people look at it and I know sometimes people get butt hurt because maybe their channels don't generate monetization money at all maybe they just struggle to make it to that milestone to get there Maybe they just don't care about putting in the work to make it to get monetization. But whatever the case may be, to knock other people for being monetized about it, it's kind of frivolous also to me, all to me too. I just, I don't get it. Um, if you feel like somebody is not being truthful about a certain thing like whether a fragrance smells good or not um, if they're being paid or gifted free bottles and stuff like that. that's another point I should have put on here but being gifted free bottles and stuff like that persuades like I've been gifted things before and that didn't stop me from telling the truth about it if I didn't like it I didn't like it I didn't trash it but I didn't like it so I don't have an issue with monetization personally, but if you can get to monetization, definitely do it. Don't just sit back and just let money slide through your fingers and you not even worry about, oh, I don't care about monetization, whatever, whatever. So you just putting in all this work for nothing then. You're just giving them free advertisement. That just, to me, doesn't make sense. If there is a way to make money um, and you can make a living off of it why not if you don't like going to a nine to five job and you would much rather sit home and make videos all day and you can get paid for it why not so for me in other words those people who have an issue with monetization let's see you go to your nine to five job and then when it when payday comes around 
you just don't even accept your check. Tell tell the company, I, oh, I don't want my check. I've put in 40 hours or 80 hours a week or 120 hours this week or whatever for two weeks or whatever the case may be. I'm good, though. I don't need the money. Tell them that. Because if that's the case, you go ahead and work for that money and take that check and bring it to me and see if I'll take it. Because I'll take it. <laughs> but anyway, guys, those are just a couple of points that I wanted to bring to the forefront that I've personally dealt with. I've personally heard about. Um, but yeah, guys, for the newbies coming into FRAGCOM, you're going to get a lot of this. Don't let it deter you from your goal. If you have a goal, stick to it. If you're passionate about fragrance, be passionate about it all the way. Don't half-ass. Figure out what kind of lane you want to be in and do it. Just do it. And don't let nobody knock you off that path. With that being said, guys, I'm out of here. Here's to smelling great. Peace. Thank you.